May we pray. Loving eternal God, you have indeed blessed us. You heard the cries of your people so long ago, and you gave them some good news, and you brought love into this world in the form of a baby, where the word became flesh. And so, God, now we have your teachings, and we have your presence among us each and every day. So help us to hear your message. Through your humble servant, we pray. Amen. This Sunday, I want to talk a little bit about hope, talk a little bit about Micah, talk a little bit about Elizabeth and Mary, and talk a little bit about what it means to provide hope for someone else. So here is Micah. He's an Old Testament prophet, what we call an Old Testament prophet. He was living in a time when they were under oppression and invasions were happening and nothing was going right. And the people couldn't really look to the leaders to help them out. And what did Micah do? Micah wants to give the people hope. And he's telling the people, he's like, there's something special that's going to happen. And it's not going to happen here in Jerusalem. It's going to be in a very small little village from some people that most of you will never know. But it's going to happen. And this one is going to be our peace. He is going to be our Savior. And Michael was talking about the one who is to come, the one that would bring hope and light to the world. He was talking about Jesus, the Messiah, our Emmanuel. And so we come now to this time with Elizabeth and Mary. Elizabeth is Mary's cousin. And I just wanted to share that too because Elizabeth was considered, she was married. If you remember, her husband wound up becoming silent once Elizabeth was with child. Now, Elizabeth was also the one who was going to give birth to who we know now as John the Baptist. And Elizabeth wasn't supposed to get pregnant in her age. She was a little bit beyond age to carry a child, so here was another miracle. And so her husband was silent during this entire time that she was pregnant until she gave birth, and then he said his name will be John. <clears throat> but while she's pregnant, her cousin Mary comes up to visit Elizabeth, and of course Mary has already been visited by the Holy Spirit, and so Mary is going to help Elizabeth with her, with her pregnancy, because Elizabeth is further along. And while Elizabeth is, you know, when Mary comes in Elizabeth's womb, John is turning up a storm there. And so Elizabeth knows that something special is going to happen with Mary, and so she, you know, tells Mary how blessed she is. And then Mary, after all that, she sings this beautiful song, which is known as the Magnificat, where she is praising God and, and celebrating God for um, this beautiful gift that she has been given, the one that she was entrusted, that she was the one entrusted to go ahead and to take care of the Savior, the one who was going to be the Messiah, and who was Mary. We know Mary to be very young, right? We know Mary, who was not only very young, but she came from a small little town at the time called Nazareth. And she was not expecting anything. And yet here is God. God chose somebody from a small little village to help change the world. And so Elizabeth and Mary, both blessed, both going to change the world in ways that they probably never could conceive. Elizabeth giving birth to John the Baptist. He was going to be the messenger. He was going to be the one to tell people that somebody special was on the way. And then here's Mary, a young person from a very small village also. And she's going to be the one to carry the Messiah. 
he would be the message. He would share the message with the world. And over 2,000 years later, we are still sharing this incredible message. How could two women from small little villages, and especially being someplace up in the hill town, you know, up in the hill country, I should say, and yet God chose them. And those two women, because of the sons that they carried, have transformed this world, even to this day. Imagine that people who thought they couldn't make a difference, people who thought that they were faithful servants of God, but they were just practicing their faith. They weren't expecting God to say, hey, have I got a, a surprise for you? Boy, do I have a task for you to do. But yet they embraced those tasks, and then Mary was so um, overcome with this beautiful gift that she sang and praised the Lord for what the Lord had done for her. <clears throat> and it wasn't going to be an easy burden, as we know. We hear more about that in the story through um, as we get closer to Holy Week and Easter, Palm Sunday and Easter. But I wanted to share with you this card, which I still have to put on the bulletin board. I'm not going to read everything. But it says, No act of kindness, no matter how small, is ever wasted. No act of kindness, however small, is ever wasted. And I think that's important for us when it comes to hope, because it's so incredible how we can give hope to someone else. And I want to share a story with you, which I saw on the news, right here in Albany. There's a gentleman who travels all over the country, and he wears a red cap, not a ball cap, but one of those, I don't know what you call those, those other kind of caps. The people in Scotland wear those nice caps, okay? And he wore a red sweater, and he doesn't um, let the media ever see his face. But there was a news, news reporter that could follow him, but they recorded him from his back, okay, as he's greeting people. But he went and visited police officers and state troopers. And this year he came to Albany. And so he gave, now granted it's money, but it was a way of giving hope. What he did was he looked for sadness in the community. He, they went with state troopers and police officers to some very tough parts of the community where people really need some hope and need some love. And he went to little shops and everything, and what he did is he looked for sadness among certain people. And he'd go up and he'd start talking to them. And this one man was on a little scooter, and they said that this, this man on the scooter was speeding, so the police pulled him over. And so the man who was so-called Santa, he gets out of the car, he said, here's your ticket, and it was a $100 bill. Merry Christmas and pay it forward. And so throughout this, our community here in Albany, he was touching different people's lives and he was in a laundromat. And this one man only had $8 to his name. $8. And this Santa Claus person said, well, can I have $2? And the man who had $8 didn't even hesitate. He took $2 and he gave it to the man. He only had $8 left to his name, but he took $2 and he certainly gave it to this man. And so the Santa man took, he said, well, here's a fair trade, and he gave him a $100 bill. He said, pay it forward. And so throughout the community, along with the police officers, they were able to reach all these people that really needed it. There was one person who said, can I donate it? Um, because they didn't want to accept this gift. They said, can I pay it forward? And, you know, we're offered to do that. And there was another woman who said, I just don't know if I can accept this because they felt guilty that somebody would reach out. And then there was a grandmother who had five grandchildren and she had no money to get Christmas gifts for her grandchildren. And so when the police officer gave her a $100 bill, she just broke down and cried and she hugged that police officer 
and just thanked him so much. And so, even though this was money given out, it wasn't just freely given, it was given to people who had some sadness and maybe some despair. And what this man was trying to do was give them hope. And he did it with the help of the police officers and state troopers. And he even went to one of the schools, one of the elementary schools, and he gave each child $20. And he invited them to pay it forward. And one little boy was just crying. He was overcome with receiving that. That was certainly one way of giving hope for this season. And sometimes I think during this particular time of year, we hear more positive stories about people reaching out. The hope that we gave today, or the other day, when we delivered all those hats, all those mittens, gloves, socks, blankets, sweaters, everything, the woman that you gave it to, she was overcome with all that we had given. Don't you think that's going to give somebody a little bit of hope? To know that somebody cares. Somebody cares about them. And then we found out also this past week that we got another thank you note from somebody who got cookies from us. And they were so thankful that we remembered them. And another person said, oh, the church didn't forget me. Little acts of kindness, no matter how small they may seem to us, can offer hope in the world. And this man who was the Santa, he said at the end, he said, imagine if Albany continued these acts of kindness. He said, they would light up the world. And I think that's what Jesus does for us, especially at this time of year. We have so much on our plates. And yes, we're getting ready to celebrate this beautiful season of Christmas and celebrate Christ's birth. But we also have the opportunity to reach out and to offer an act of kindness to someone else. And that act of kindness might give that person some hope. Hope that is so desperately needed in this world. It doesn't have to come from our government or our big institutions. Hope can easily be given from each and every one of us. Share those acts of kindness. Reach out with love and compassion. No matter how small it may seem, it can change the world, just like Mary and Elizabeth did so long ago. Amen.